Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house. I am your host, Khadija. How y'all doing out there on this beautiful, beautiful Saturday uh, evening? Well, at least that's what it is here. And all over the diaspora, I want to welcome you to the mental house. Um, today, I want to do a few videos. Hopefully, I'll be able to. Um, and the first one I want to talk about is, you know, compulsive, obsession, compulsive disorders. And I don't think that a lot of um, people, especially in the... Um, uh, uh, mainstream or a lot of people who uh, work in the public we really don't take the time to find out and we really don't take the time to see a lot of what um, goes on until we're confronted with an issue let me just put it like that okay otherwise I'll be all over the place so I want to talk to you about the time that I was a health inspector and um which uh, helps play a part in my insanity. Um, the more I'm looking at how far I've stretched my brain, you know, from normalcy. Y'all already know uh, these two types. One of them that you can, um, uh, abnormal three that you can like and one that you can't like or you don't like. And I think for me, when I talk about working for the city of Milwaukee, was a time when I stretched the abnormalities to beyond compassion for myself. And I'm saying that because there's a song by Charlie Rich that says, um, Oh, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors. And they really don't. When you look at these homes, you see the nice doors and you know, some of them have beautifully manicured lawns, and, uh, nice awnings, uh, statues and flowers in the yards. And we just assume that that is a beautiful house because the exterior and aesthetically, oh, we see beauty. But a lot of times when you open a door and you go inside, that house is full of dead man's bones. Unbelievable. Um if it's a house that's aesthetically beautiful, a lot of times the people are tortured um, and tortured to the point where uh, there's a perfection that is expected of them. And if they deviate from that role, it could be hell to pay. You know, and, and so I don't think a lot of people uh, don't understand just how far reaching and how soul murdering. And emotionally dangerous it is to be around people who have compulsives or who have uh, mental illnesses and they're not being addressed. Because when you've been raised by this type of emotionally void person, you know, it leaves you stuck really in a vulnerable place. It really does. Um, the, the hardest thing in the world for those of us who are parents is to really sit back and imagine it, it, and whether you're thinking it about yourself or your parents. It's like, do I really love my child? Does my child um, really mean the world to me? Did I really have my child for reasons um, that were for their best interest? Or was it a selfish uh, reason I did it for my best interest? And Or does my parent love me? I mean, these are all things that I think um, as you get older or as a child grows, that comes a very significant part of their mindset. So those of us, and uh, well, those, I ain't going to say us because I'm way past that, but a lot of people who are out there just um, having kids without any rhyme or any reason, um, other than they having sex, and, they, and because they have sex, they got to have a baby. Um, when we dealing off that really, really low chakra and that low vibration like that, is it any wonder 
that we have such a disconnect, a human disconnect um, with the families and the babies. Is there any, any freaking wonder? Um, because to be rejected by your, uh, the people that you are spiritually and physically attached to beyond reason on a cellular level to be rejected by them is almost um, like a spiritual death. You know, so I'm saying that so, and I know that a lot of times dealing with people like that is very difficult. And so there's a, uh, a few stories that, well, actually there's a few things that made me um, really contemplate um, or made me reevaluate uh, how much pressure I could take. And one of the significant, it was never that in show business. It was always that for me in the real world, um, um, you know, which is crazy. Uh, show business was an escape from the real world. <laughs> it was an escape from church. It was an escape from a lot of that, even though um, when I look at it, at it now, there's a lot of similarities. But when I worked for the city of Milwaukee, again, there was a different side of, of the city that I never saw before. I would have never experienced unless I did this job. And so those of y'all, like I said, who travel the world, or we, I mean, travel up and down the streets, we never even give that a second thought. What's going on behind some of these closed doors? You know, whether it's psychological abuse. And, mm -hmm. um, but there are some people who for, the jig is up. And they make us aware because of their men their mental illness becomes uh, to a point where it can't be hidden anymore. And this story touches home for me for a couple of reasons. Um, ones I was involved in it. Um, it kind of shaped the, the beginning of the end of my employment for the city uh, because I realized that this stuff was getting way too far out of my scope of normality um, and I had already been dealing with enough as <laughs> as it was uh, and the other one was a national story and we'll talk about that a little later but this story um, really affected me because I, I lived it and this was um, a woman who suffered from obsessive compulsive disorders and I um, know now what type of um, help this woman should have gotten. But of course, that's not what the city's job is. Their job is just to you know, enforce ordinances. And that's what they had us doing. Okay, so I want to share a story with you now about this woman who has been doing the same thing for 30 years, basically. So, a town of Ashford woman has a long history of animal hoarding and charges involving animal neglect. A total of 42 sick cats were removed Friday from a feces field mobile home at W3198 County Air Drive outside Campbellsport. A 79 year old, the 79 year old owner, Bobby Bruflat, was rescued and hospitalized after falling ill from diabetes complications. Brewflat was trapped in the home and unable to move from her sofa for four days. She was surrounded by filth, cat feces, and urine that covered the floor. The Fond du Lac County Health Department has since deemed the house uninhabitable. A spokesperson Spokesperson at Columbia St. Mary's Hospital in Milwaukee said Bruce Flack is no longer a patient there and her location was unknown. Back in the 80s, and this is when I encountered her, arrest records for Bruce Flack involving animal cruelty charges date back to 1983 when 179 cats with fleas and skin conditions were taken from her residence on the Lower East Side of Milwaukee, according to articles that appeared in the Journal Sentinel at the time. 
In September 1984, the charges were dropped and 80 cats were returned to the Bruflex, and they agreed not to exceed that number. At that time, she and her husband James were operating the full bowl cat shelter in an adjoining house. And to me, that was the beginning of the end because I could not understand for the life of me why they allowed her to, she had a duplex. And if she was already filthy, it's like, why would you let her take the other side and just take, she had a thousand cats in there and get them down to 80. <laughs> this is just going to show you that we're a nation of laws on top of laws on top of laws that don't even make any sense at some point. Anyway, um, now you remember what I said. They told her she can keep 80 cats. In 1985, the Wisconsin Humane Society sued the couple for 20000 the cost of treating sick animals. In turn, the couple filed for bankruptcy, according to the Journal Sentinel. In August 1986, another 200 cats were found living in the same house, many emaciated and suffering from numerous diseases. In November 1987, about 90 cats were removed from the same residence. Nine of them were dead. The couple was charged with mistreatment of animals and evicted from the two duplexes. According to the Journal Sentinel, oh, by the way, we had to destroy the house. The house had to be demolished. According to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, workers smashed windows and doors to get fresh air into the putrid buildings. Some tied cloths over their noses and mouths before entering because the stench inside was so pungent. There was about 10 years of animal waste inside, one worker said. And just to kind of give you guys a, a visual, um, imagine having five stairs um, as you come into your rear door and the five stairs that kind of sit there in the hall or the foyer area leads to the apartment or leads to the, um, you know, entrance into the home. All of that was covered with feces. You couldn't even see um, the outline of a step. So when you went into her house, you had to course have gloves on and hold on to the railings or the walls to kind of uh, scan your way uh, up the stairs. The cats, um, ugh. okay, so you got that in your mind? That's how much feces was in the house. She had dead cats in the house that were in the feces. When you opened the back door, you could see fur, you could see skeletons uh, where kittens had been born and Oof, not taken and properly cared for, and they died in this squalor. This is what we saw when we entered the apartment. We saw this, and it was just, it was insane. Anyway, um, and let me say this again. Most of the cats that I remember seeing, their noses and their mouths were adjoined, and they were just like, almost like rotted out from the respiratory problems that they had um, from spirit being in there with that urine. In December 1987, sheriff's officials removed 102 cats that appeared ill from a barn the couple was renting for use as a cat shelter in Ozaki County on a property near Fredonia. More than 22 died or were euthanized because of their condition, according to the Journal Sentinel article. Many of the cats tested positive for feline leukemia. I believe this was after the, the city told her she what she would do is she would just rent different properties and trailers and stuff when you know you couldn't catch her she was slither if you got her here and once she uh, tore her ass with the city of Milwaukee she started going to these other counties you know the Bruflex were sentenced to three years probation for failing to maintain the sanitary conditions at their cat shelter. They entered into a plea agreement that allowed them to keep one pet. Hmm. The Bruflex were jailed after they violated probation by keeping 21 cats in 1989 in a resident on West Silver Spring Road in Milwaukee. Isn't that sick? They kept another residence. 
21 cats in that resident. Psychological evaluations were ordered and no obvious problems were found. Really? Ray Thomas of Fredonia said that she used to volunteer at Full Bowl and about five years ago, Bruflex showed up at her doorstep with 22 cats in tow asking for a place to stay. I tried to help her. I let her stay for a while, but she ruined things in my house. And when I tried to get her out, she wouldn't go. She would threaten that if I would turn her in, they would come and take all of her cats and they would kill them. Uh, Thomas said one day Bruflet fell ill and broke her hip, and after she discovered, I mean, after she recovered and left the hospital, she moved into that trailer in Ashford. It cost me three thousand dollars to have my home professionally cleaned, she said. At least it was cleanable. Fond du Lac Humane Society shelter manager Renee Webb said it is difficult to understand someone who has repeated issues of. Um, animal hoarding. Now she is almost 80 years old and I hope that she finally gets some help. Brufleck told a reporter after she called from the hospital room that she will not give the Humane Society custody of her cats because she is afraid some might be euthanized or homes will not be found for them. Some of the Bruflax neighbors have been blaming themselves, Webb says, saying they should have known. People who do this sort of thing do everything they can to make sure nobody knows. It's difficult to stop them because they have the right. They have rights and they don't have to let people in their homes. This woman knows how to work the system. Obviously, as you see, she went from trailer to trailer to county to county. Thomas says Bruce Lex has a sister living in South Dakota who tried over the years to help to get help for her sibling. It's certainly tragic, really, to hear the pain and suffering that has happened all over again, Thomas said. Um, and the story is extremely sensitive for me because I'm hearing, I haven't seen it, but I've been hearing that uh, my father is beginning to um, show signs of hoarding. And um, I told you he is um, a throwback from the, uh, the uh, time when, um, well, just, just put it like this. Let me just suffice it to say this because I don't even want to talk about him right now. I'm just going to suffice it to say that I'm concerned that he may end up in this same situation. And that, that since um, it really depresses me, I mean, when I think about it, because the first thing people are going to say is, um, you know, who did he have? Where are his people? Isn't anybody, nobody knew he was doing that? Well, I'm no contact with my father, and I have been for the last uh, 28 years. So, um, of course, um, you know, <laughs> how can I go there and begin to talk about him cleaning up his house? I haven't, I haven't even seen it or him. But anyway, that's just, that's another story for another day. I just wanted to talk about um, when you have these compulsive compulsions and these type of um, people that are obsessed with things. Those are sometimes um, the hardest things to get people to get help for. But we are going to have to get a grip. And it could be the same thing with dogs. Um, or if you're living in a house uh, full and with roaches, and that's not a problem for you. If you live in a house and it's full of roaches, you should be trying to get rid of them. You should be, um, instead of buying a 40-ounce or buying a 6-pack or a 12-pack, you should be buying some decon and some roach motels and all those things and put them in the corners of your home. You don't necessarily have to you know, do some spraying if you can't um, afford that. But you have to at least try to conquer um, what you see that's abnormal because everybody doesn't have bugs running around in their home. And I grew up um, 
with an uh, aunt that had roaches. And I swear it was just murder for us to go over their house for me. And I hated it. And I would hate to go over there. I would hate to use the bathroom because it seemed like that's the place that they all congregated. And I would just be sitting there on the toilet and watching the damn roaches all over the place if I could use the bathroom. Um, and so when I was small, I remember asking my mom, why did she have all those bugs in there? Now, a bigger thing for me now is why would you even take your kids over there? But well, that's another story I don't want to talk about. Um, <laughs> but, and this is no disrespect to anybody that's got uh, roaches right now. And I know that you, you, you can't, you might be in a situation where you're in an apartment building and the people around you have roaches. Remember, I was a health inspector. So, and I know that they travel. I've actually seen them travel from one house to the next, one house to the next. But if you combat them, if you find a way to combat the roaches, trust me, they will go to everybody's house except yours. I mean, they will get out of your house quick. If the, you take boric acid and go along the baseboards and um, those type of things that You've uh, seen people that come out and because when you do that, they take a poison back to the nest and it kind of like sterilizes them. You, it takes work, but you can not keep them down in your apartment. And all I'm trying to say is these are the beginning when you have to live in these kind of circumstances. And can you imagine as a child, as a child, to have to grow up in squalor or you have to grow up and you got... Fortunately, my father is like that now. He's been lonely for 28 years, and I believe that's why he's doing it. Because he couldn't, he never did it when he had a wife. Because a wife civilizes you, and you won't be allowed. If she's civil, you know, you. he didn't have the issues that he had. So my point being that a lot of times people pick that up when they're older and they live alone. You know? Um, but what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to say is that if you're a child living in that kind of condition, there's nothing you can do. It's almost like, again, you're being held hostage um, to that environment. So you cannot clean up the inside of yourself without looking at your environment and the whole totality of what is around you because it all has to be clean. Okay? Um, so I'm just want to do that and, and I want y'all to marinate on that a little bit. And the brew flexes, Bonnie Brew Flat. I'll never forget her. And here she is, 20, 25 years later, 85, 95, 2005, 30 years later, the same behavior that we had to address. So mental illness does not get better unless you address it. It just gets worse. Okay, so I'm going to go now. If you like what you hear, please like, share. And subscribe and um i'm gonna see you next time right here in the mental house so we can talk about some real mental stuff thanks bye bye